Well, 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 it's that time of the year again. The yearly tradition on this channel, though. One time a year where wrestling comes back in the focus. This is Code K Fave for maybe the one and probably only time this year. If I feel like doing more of these things. It's WrestleMania predictions time. Well, I'm not gonna call myself a prediction genius. I just watch the product really, really carefully. Because I have two sets of eyeballs. These are the only predictions you really need. Because for the most part, they're gonna be right. It's the one time I can stroke my own ego. And believe me, this year's WrestleMania is all about, well, family, acknowledgement, and ego. Nice to know, considering we're off to L.A. this year. Although this wasn't supposed to be L.A.'s year. L.A. was originally the home of WrestleMania 37. But thanks to COVID, it got pushed back a full two years till now. But the card is stacking up to be one of the greatest cards that Mania has had lately. Now, one thing about me is I don't give a freak about builds at all. Zero. I can give a darn what, how good or how bad the build is. Just get me to the match. And these matches are good. There are three matches in particular that have very good builds for those who care about that sort of thing. But, let's get down to brass tacks. As you know, WrestleMania is divided into the two-night structure. The predictions that you have here will encompass all matches on all nights. So I'm not splitting it into two here. Also, when applicable, I will give you the exact result of what the match will be. This is the part where things might get a little squirrely, but I will try my best to predict not only the outcomes, but how the outcomes will occur. And first up is the technical opener. John Cena versus Austin Fury for the United States Championship. Now, John Cena? In a curtain jerker? Yes. You got it right. John Cena is going to open WrestleMania. The first time he's ever done so. He's always been at the back of Mania cards. This is the first time he's up front. And he's chasing yet another US title and yet another title on his already Hall of Fame trophy case. In its way stands the cocky Austin Fury, who's got a mean streak about a mile wide since failing to cash in money in the bank a few months ago. Funny how we totally forgot that happened due to this attitude adjustment of sorts. Now, this could be a coin flip, but I'm not going to be stupid. I'm choosing Austin Fury to win. Now, yes, the fan in me 
would love to see the absolute troll burial job and John Cena get one last smack with the golden shovel up on side Austin Fury's head and send him straight to Jobberville. But no, that's clearly not happening here. Austin Fury's winning this match. Now, the way he'll win it, however, might be interesting. It could be due to multiple item downs, or it could be due to a little move theft via an attitude adjustment. In other words, Austin Fury's career is about to get its final shot of defibrillator. Now, whether the fans take him seriously as a champion after this is a big question mark. But at least coming out of WrestleMania, he'll be alright. He'll be okay. He'll get the W here. Also, next up, Brock Lesnar vs. Omos. I'll give a short and sweet. Brock Lesnar wins. 1F5. Only one. This causes the breakup between Emma, MVP, and Omos, which will recant in the resurgence of the Hurt Business after Lashley gets embarrassed either by a combination of L.A. Knight and Bray Wyatt or just L.A. Knight. Either way, this is the end for Omos, and thank freaking God. This thing couldn't be over faster if you ask me. Two minutes. The match will last two minutes. I will be surprised if it lasts three. This thing is going to be finishers on, like playing 2K. And the whole story of this is whether Brock can get him up. Oh, he'll get him up, all right. And probably separate a shoulder. But it will take one F5 to do it. Just one. Seth Rollins versus Logan Paul. Beware. This thing is a trap. If you're on DraftKings or anywhere where predictions for money can be made, this is the trap match of night one. Because this thing could fly in either direction. One thing's for sure. Don't be surprised if it's the show stealer of Saturday night. Logan Paul is... For all his transgressions on YouTube, and all that he is, a great professional wrestler. He is a natural at doing this job. And he will showcase it yet again. Remember, the last time he was in the ring, he was in the ring with the Chief. The champ. That's all you need to know when it comes down to Logan Paul getting into this match. And as for Seth Rollins, Seth is Seth. On the WrestleMania stage, he elevates. That's all you need to know. His entrance will be elevated. That annoying chant will be elevated. Everything about him will be elevated. To a level of extreme here. He'll win the match. More than likely. And he'll get a surprise help as to why. He'll get help from The Miz. Now many people will say, The Miz? Well, he's the one that started Logan Paul down his wrestling path when he debuted last year. And... He's the one that, better for worse, or accidentally, put this match into play. Miz always wanted this past year is attention and credibility 
for being who he is, and especially being the host of WrestleMania, he's being outshadowed and outshined by these two. And he definitely wants to pay Logan Paul back for blowing him off. So don't be surprised if the Miz is involved somehow directly in Logan getting the L or the dub. Miz is going to be involved in it. We just don't know which way he turns. For me, I'm saying he turns pro Seth. Although, high chances, I could be wrong. Heels often stick together and faces have no friends. But for now, the prediction is Seth Rollins for the victory. Ah, yes. Now it's time for the obligatory showcase match. There's going to be one each night. And I would suspect the one for night one will be the women's four-way. Shayna and Ronda will win it. That's all you need to know. Shayna will be doing all the heavy lifting because they want to put her in a position of power again. And because Ronda has a bum, bum shoulder right now. So don't expect her to do a lot of lifting in this match. This just shows how pathetic the women's division as a whole, both brands included, is. The fact that we just have to throw women together, it's a giant waste of time. Even talking about it in this video is a giant waste of time. There's even no stakes in it. That's why I put it here right now. Because the other two women's matches have a lot more stakes. As for the men's side of a tag team Fatal 4-Way, expect the Street Profits to win, but also expect this to be the end of Alpha Academy. Yes, I know. Boo. Chad Gable gets left at the altar yet again. He just can't get a stable tag team partner. But thanks to the Maxim Male Models looking at Otis for their plus-sized modeling, that's going to lead to the breakup of this team. Hopefully, this will lead to Chad Gable finally getting a mid-card singles push. My God, can we please? Chad Gable was one of the most athletic wrestlers there is today. Period. Full stop. He should be successful here, even in defeat. His career goes up, and so does the Street Profits. Because they get the W, and they're probably the first team, if not the second, to challenge the, hint of spoiler, new undisputed tag team champions when that happens. Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley. SmackDown Women's Championship. End of night one? Question mark? Still? We probably won't know this match's placement until the end of the, until the end of the night when all their matches have been pulled. But don't be surprised that the power of Woo ends up it ends up making this match go last. God, I hate Charlotte Flair and her name having so much creative pull. But sadly, getting the match on last is probably the last thing that the pull will give her. Because she's taking this L to Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley and the leader of the Third Street Saints... Dominic Mysterio are the greatest thing about the Third Street Saints, a.k.a. Judgment Day. 
<laughs> and one of them is about to win a title. The other one is probably going to get smacked around a bit. But we're about to get to that. This match will be a banger, especially if Charlotte decides to actually do business and put Rhea over and make her look good instead of instead of being upset to lose another main event but then again she's three titles off of breaking her father's hollowed record which shouldn't even count given the length length of her reigns but stats are stats, and they're going to break it. So in order to do that, she's got to take the L here. Yes, it's sad. It's vain. That, that's the reason Charlotte loses here. But that is the reason. It's going to be clean in the middle. One, two, three. You can count on it. Now. As for the match that should end night one, the undisputed tag team championship of the world, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens going up against the Usos. We all know how this ends. We've all watched the story. It's the most predictable of predictable finishes, but that's why it feels so good. This year's WrestleMania is about the fall of the Roman Empire. So does that make Cody Rhodes General Scipio? Well, in that vein, the first cracks of the Roman Empire begin right here with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn winning the tag team titles and thus the Usos kicked out of the bloodline and probably splitting from each other. Yeah, I could see the Usos accidentally super kicking each other and this is what causes a split finally between Jimmy and Jay. Put a pin in Jay's attitude coming out of this match, because it will probably matter later. But at the end of the day, the Usos' long reign, the reign that beat the New Day, finally ends. And the tag team, team division can finally have something to fight for. Both the tag team titles and the world titles are emphasis on why the two belt system absolutely fucking sucks. Can we break it down to just one title, please? One set, period, men's and women's. Night two's opener is a little bit tricky to figure out. We all know night two's closer, but I'm going to take a guess that night two's opener will be Bianca Belair and Asuka starting out the curtain jerk for the Raw Women's Championship, the true Women's Championship. Why? Because Bianca Belair has been on a Roman-style reign but because the women's division sucks 20 tons of sack, nobody cares. Unless Asuka is involved, of course. The Japanese murderous assassin is back. And she's been channeling her Joker vibes. And this Joker vibe is going to put her back at the top of the list. Expect this match. Like all Bianca Championship matches at Mania, to be an absolute banger. Expect it to go back and forth. Expect it to be 10 to 12 minutes long, and expect Oscar to win. Even using Hall of Famer Great Muda's Mist to get the job done and 
cause Bianca Belair to tap for the first time in her life as Asuka wins the true women's championship and don't expect her to lose it for quite a bit of time. This is going to be a long reign, ladies and gents. You can count on that. As for the six-man tag, just understand, Trish and Lita are in the match. Trish and Lita will win. Damage Control loses about as much as a Power Rangers villain. They're going to lose here. Next! <laughs> we have the Intercontinental Championship. Which, honestly, because I am a man of tradition, this should go on right before the world title matches. You heard me. Intercontinental Championship next to last. That's what the tradition is. But we're going to put the, put the prediction here. Sheamus wins. Pinning Drew McIntyre. It's going to be back and forth. It's going to be claymores. It's going to be pro kicks. It's going to be chops that sound like shotguns. This thing is going to be violent. With three of the most violent, non-violent people in all of WWE chopping each other senseless. Don't be surprised if Imperium gets involved, but because of the nature of triple threats, you can almost bank on it. And expect Gunther to lose so that he can win a world title at SummerSlam. Yeah, I said it. By this time, by this time in August, we'll be talking about Gunther chasing, chasing world gold. But for this, he's got to lose here. Sheamus finally gets the Intercontinental Championship He's been pawning for. But unfortunately, this is going to awaken the heel turn within Drew. Can we please get anything past I'm Scottish? Please? Hell in a cell. Back to the white cage. Thank God. And what a perfect time to re-debut the white cage. Edge versus Finn Balor. Demon Finn Balor. That hasn't been seen since the embarrassment with the Fiend and the ropes. Remember, the last time we saw the Demon, it was an L. This time, this could be the one true coin flip. You could see this going either way. I'm saying Edge, but this could very easily go Finn Balor's, so, for once, don't take my absolute word on it. This one is a 50-50 split and a guaranteed banger. I'm saying Edge for the win, but then again, to keep Judgment Day strong, it could easily go the other way, too. Guess we're going to have to wait and see. Which leads to Dom and Rey Mysterio. Now, Dom and Rey Mysterio could easily be before the Hell in a Cell or after the Hell in a Cell. If it's before, expect Dom in both situations to win. But if Dom wins before Finn hits the curtain... Finn will probably win the Hell in a Cell. If Dom is after the Hell in a Cell, it could go Edge's way. Yes, I know. Placement of match, determining booking, it's happening. It's happened a few times before. But expect this, the most emotional match in the Mania card to be every bit of emotional as you expect it to be. Ray's going into the Hall of Fame. He's probably going to get 
one heck of an entrance and one heck of a costume. This is going this is going to be the most emotional of matches outside of a main event itself. Expect Michael Cole to blow an aneurysm as to how much he hates Dominic Mysterio. I mean, he hates this kid more than he hated Jerry Lawler when he was in the box. That's how much this dude be hating. But it's good to see Michael Cole play a face for once. Dom gets the win. Off of the frog splash. Off of a 619. The feud may not be over after this. But it's certainly headed that way. As. As far as. As far as the last match up goes, Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns. The end. 945. What is the relevance of that number? 945 is the number of days that Roman Reigns has been the true king of the wrestling world. With the most important championship in all of sports, the most dominant faction in all of professional wrestling since evolution, and all the wins, whether cheap or otherwise, to back it up. This is a match about family. This is a match about legacy. This is a match about acknowledgement. And for the Rhodes family, they've been the grinders from the very beginnings of their wrestling history. Dusty Rhodes struggling in the A and NWA, being the booker in WCW, the lead commentator at times, wrestling in polka dots, the whole nine, even all the way up to his last moments, throwing the wrestlers of tomorrow in the early NXT. The Rhodes family has made an impact, but has never been world champion. The ultimate acknowledgement of wrestling history, the thing that gets you, or at least should get you, Stacey Keebler, into Hall of Fames. Cody Rhodes has the chance to do so, period. And he will. 945 days after the reign begins, due to Jey Uso, the reign will end because of Jey Uso. Regardless of Soa Sokoa's interference, Regardless of Jimmy trying to talk him down the ledge, it will be Jey Uso doing, doing his best Mark Anthony impression and going at to Brute on Roman, causing the crossroads of destiny to finally hit. Cody Rhodes is your new undisputed champion. The Universal title burns asunder the next night on Raw. A new WWE Championship is unveiled that doesn't look like a goddamn toy. And we can finally get to a legacy worth celebrating. It's time for the WWE to evolve again, as it always does at every WrestleMania. And it's time for the greatest championship in all of sports to actually look like a championship worth buying a replica of. Cody Rhodes is your winner in the Mania main event of the evening of night two. 
And yes, Cody Rhodes is going to blow the entire pyro budget in just his entrance. You can bank on it. Will Bray show up? I don't know. Will Stone Cold Steve Austin show up? I don't know. But, if all the matches hit their proper beats, WrestleMania 39 should be an absolute memorable affair. I can't wait for it. After all, it's my second birthday. And this year, literally, when I was supposed to be born 39 years ago, I was supposed to be born around Mania Weekend. Yep, I was supposed to be an April 1st, April 2nd baby. So especially when Mania locks on that date, second birthday it is. What are your predictions? Tell me... If I'm crazy, we're wrong. Leave your comments down below. I'm Nirvana Sparkle. Find peace in your own Nirvana. Acknowledge that.